Hey guys, maybe you've seen headlines about the debt crisis and aren't sure what it's about. In this video, I hope to break it down for you and make it simpler to understand. And hopefully you get the impact of how devastating this might be if nothing's done by October 18th. And the real possibility that we could be headed to a real Great Depression-like feel. Just like any business, the United States has expenses. Big expenses. The military, Social Security, Medicaid, schools, roads, bridges, the space program, tons of foreign aid. And just like any business, they need income to pay for these expenses. The United States has two main ways where they fund government expenses. First, through taxes, which everybody's familiar with. The second, people are less likely familiar with, and that's through debt. The government issues treasury bonds. A treasury bond is basically an IOU where you agree to give the government money now in exchange for interest payments over time. A treasury bond is known as one of the most safest investments you can make. That's because the government has always paid its debts. And since taking on debt can be reckless, Congress realized this and in 1939 passed a law putting a ceiling on how much the United States government could take on in debt. This is known as the debt limit or the debt ceiling. Putting a cap on how much debt the government could take seems like a reasonable idea, but it also limits their spending, and the government doesn't like that. So every few years, they have to get together and either raise the debt ceiling or suspend it altogether. In fact, since World War II, the government has raised the debt ceiling 98 different times. In 2019, because of the COVID pandemic, Congress suspended the debt ceiling altogether. You might remember those stimulus payments. Well, the suspension expired on July 31st of 2021, and now the Congress is out of money. And now they're trying to pass a $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill to compound on top of the debt they already have. This government's out of money and out of options. This kind of reckless spending should make you mad. In fact, it made the Republicans so mad that they put their foots down and said they're not going to raise the debt ceiling. Now, this congressional stalemate is like a giant game of chicken. The outcome which could be catastrophic for the entire world economy. If the Republicans don't agree to raise the debt ceiling by October 18th, the United States is going to default for the first time in history on its debt. Now since the United States has never defaulted on its debt, it's impossible to say what's going to happen for sure, but it is certain that it's going to be catastrophic. For starters, on day one most likely, seniors will lose all their benefits and the military will stop getting their paychecks. And if that's not bad enough, within the first five days, the stock market is almost certainly going to collapse. Over the coming month, the U.S. dollar will lose significant value. Interest rates will skyrocket, making loans almost impossible to afford. Internationally, credit markets will face severe repercussions. And you don't need a crystal ball to predict that this could be the single catalyst event that might be the downfall of the American economy. In the September 19th, Wall Street Journal op-ed article, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said, Failing to raise the debt ceiling would produce widespread economic catastrophe and would likely precipitate a historic financial crisis. What she's saying here is that our country is going to reverse into a recession, with billions of dollars in growth gone and millions of jobs lost. Now the good news is that in all probability the crisis will be avoided. America's come close to default before in the past, and in every instance, Congress has been able to modify the debt ceiling. In fact, there's three ways President Joe Biden could fix the debt crisis all by himself. And for a president that's known for using executive orders to work around Congress, this is probably going to happen. Come on, man. Now, for one thing, he could actually mint what's known as the trillion dollar coin. Now, let me first say this is actually a real thing that's being considered by the Democrats right now. With this option, they literally print a platinum coin that's worth a trillion dollars. They then use this and hand it over to the Federal Reserve as a form of payment. Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, has to legally use this to relinquish our debt. It's unlikely that they'll use this tactic. It has to be approved by our Treasury Secretary, who's Janet Yellen. And since she's coming from a role as the head of the Fed, it's kind of a conflict of interest, and we don't see her screwing the Fed in that way. Biden's second option is to invoke the 14th Amendment. Section 4 of the amendment, passed just after the Civil War when the country is in major debt, says, The validity of the public debt of the United States, authorized by law, 
shall not be questioned. Lots of legal scholars had argued that that clause makes the debt ceiling in itself unconstitutional, although it's definitely not the consensus among constitutional law experts. If President Biden were to say the debt ceiling was unconstitutional, there really is no one that could stop him from doing that. Now Biden's third option is to create quasi-debt. What this means is to have the Treasury Department create a special purpose entity that creates securities outside of the Treasury bonds. Since these aren't technically bonds, it's not subjected to the debt ceiling. Now each one of those options has pros and cons, but Biden ultimately is going to have to pick one of them. Now no matter what happens, the risk for investors is still there. During these uncertain times, the market is still extremely volatile. When this happened in 2011, the VIX fear index hit almost 50. Now if you'd watched my last video, you'd know that this was a great buying opportunity to get into the market. But if you had not sold and held onto your position through this, you would have suffered severely. Investors should think about diversifying their portfolios or finding ways to hedge against a potential downturn. In the past, gold and commodities, as well as cryptocurrencies, have done excellent in times like this. No matter what happens, the government is the one that got themselves into this through reckless spending, and they're going to have to get themselves out. But one thing is certain, that the American people are the ones that are going to suffer from this. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Please give me a like or follow. It really helps me out. Thanks a lot.